Hello everybody, what a beautiful day. In this video, we are gonna cover everything you need to know about your first time kite foiling. Welcome back. Thank you so much for subscribing. If you haven't, click the bell, like, subscribe. Let's get to it. All right, so today we're gonna go over everything you need to know about your first time kite foiling. So what I wanna cover with you guys is this. If I'm on the fence and I'm not sure if I should kite foil or not, here's how you make your decisions. Do I wanna kite more days? Yes. Get into kite foiling, for sure. You're gonna kite so many more days. You're also gonna be powered. It's an amazing experience and it's totally for you and you can do it. I promise you, you can do this. So who's the right person to get started to learn how to kite foil? The right person is somebody who, not saying you can't start and just go from never kiting before to going right into it, but you're gonna need some lessons. So I would say the person is somebody who's kiteboarding, they can stay up wind, maybe they live in a light wind spot, and they're ready to kind of have a little bit more power or get more days on the water. That's a perfect person. Now, before you even start this, there's options. You can go take a lesson behind a boat. You can definitely get on an e-foil. It'll for sure help you with that understanding of foiling. I highly recommend the e-foil. It's a very good way to get a feeling of foiling before you do anything, kite, behind a boat, whatever it may be. Now, we're lucky today because Jupiter Kiteboarding loaned us a shorter mast for learning how to kite foil, which I highly recommend. In my opinion, this is just my take on it, so there's a lot of opinions out there. I recommend, for your first starting, I'd recommend like a double agent with a short shaft, very simple basic foil, not tons of lift, you just want a basic foil. And the reason I say that, your kite has power, so you just need a foil that's gonna get up and go. You don't need the liftiest foil, you just need a foil that's stable. And a short shaft is gonna help a ton because you're gonna learn the balance, you're gonna learn the what not to do, and that's gonna help a ton and make your learning curve a lot faster. You can learn on a long strut. It's just gonna be a lot harder, a longer mass. It's just gonna be a lot harder, and maybe your wipeouts are gonna be a lot worse. So in my opinion, I recommend a short shaft. Now, another important question that comes up a ton is foot straps or no foot straps? You're gonna have many opinions on this. My opinion is this. I think foot straps help you keep leverage on a foil. And I'll go more in depth on this, but foot straps in my opinion are a great way to start. I think strapless can be a little bit more dangerous and I think one strap, which a lot of people do, is nice because it's nice to have that front one strap, but if you slip out, it puts a lot of leverage on your front foot. So I recommend two foot straps. That's just my personal opinion. Um, I think as you progress, you can ride whatever you wanna ride. Um, foot hooks are super good too. That's another um, option for you. But I recommend two foot straps dead in the center, not on the foot, not on the sides. The reason why, because center on the board just keeps a center leverage directly into that mass or directly into that foil versus if I'm out on the side, it becomes a little bit different, a little bit more of a different leverage. So this setup is just a standard double agent. Um, double agent foil um, and a double agent board and that is it and uh, highly recommend this for learning. It's a great setup to learn. So when I start foiling on a kite for the first time, I need to pick the right kite size. So what is the right kite size to pick? If the winds are lighter, let's just call it it's 15 miles an hour, 15 knots. You don't need to rig the same power as what you rig on a twin tip. Because a foil has so much lift and, and efficiency, you can ride smaller. Now saying that, when you're first learning how to foil, it's nice to make sure that the kite has, you know, it's not turning and then backing up and falling out of the sky. You wanna make sure you have enough power to fly the kite perfectly. Like you don't need to be fully powered up, you just need to have standard power. If anything, the lighter side is not gonna hurt you because a foil has so much, it generates so much power. So, to answer your question or make it easier for you, if I showed up the beach and it's blowing, let's just say 12 knots, I'm gonna usually choose anywhere around a 12 or down. Now, the reason I say that is, once I start moving on that foil, it creates apparent wind and everything becomes powerful. So, just remember this, when you go out, you don't need to be super overpowered. If anything, that makes it very challenging. You just wanna be comfortably powered. That's it. Now, 
What do I do with the kite when I go? Is it just like a twin tip? I do the same dive. What do I do? Here's what I would say. It definitely helps to have a thinner board when you first start. A thicker board is hard to get your feet into. It's also hard to leverage it and get started. So the thinner the board, it's nice and easy. You can set it in the water just like a twin tip and you can dive your kite and you can get that movement going. Now everything you've ever learned in kiteboarding on a twin tip, we'll call that more back foot pressure, riding a twin tip, throw that out the window. Now we're on a foil. Foil, it's actually the opposite. You want more front foot pressure when you first start because that's gonna keep the nose down on the foil and keep it from foiling. So you actually wanna be more centered or forward to keep it from foiling. When you first start, it's good to not try to foil. You're really trying to just ride the board on the water because underneath that foil is actually moving, creating apparent wind, creating lift, and you're all of a sudden gonna be powered up more than you've ever been on a twin tip because of how efficient a foil is. So, we rig a smaller kite. We start with a little thinner board. It's just gonna be just like a twin tip. Now, the most important thing, the best tip I can give you guys is don't ever try to bend or leverage yourself on a foil. Wherever that foil is in line, you wanna be in line. So if this is the foil, my body is directly in line with that foil. So if this is the foil, I'm in line with it. I never wanna bend and have that foil at a different angle because honestly, the foil is gonna win. So what I mean by that is if the foil starts to go this way and you go this way, just start over again and get going because you wanna be directly over that mast, always pressuring directly against it. You never wanna to try to counterbalance it because it will win. So your first dive. So here I am, I have the foil on my feet, I'm ready to go, what do I do? I take the kite, I dive the kite like a normal dive but remember, you don't need as much power because this thing's gonna wanna go. And my weight goes forward, so I keep that nose down and I don't have that board jump up on me because the foil's gonna wanna jump up. So I keep my weight forward and I dive that kite. Now here's the most important part. As long as I get that board up onto the surface and it's planing, the second it's planing and I'm moving, that's when you take your kite and instead of doing big dives like a twin tip where you generate your speed, I dive my kite I get that board up planing. The second it's planing and I'm moving, that kite goes from the big dives, it goes to little check turns up high. And the reason why those little check turns are just gonna generate enough to get that moving because your board's all of a sudden gonna start to move and you don't need as much power once you start moving. It's gonna generate its own power. So the goal is a big dive, get that board up on the plane, once I'm moving, little check turns. Keep that kite high, depower your bar. You're gonna have more power than you think. Make sure to edge into the wind. And more importantly, keep that weight forward. That'll keep that nose of the board down. It'll keep that board nice and mellow going across the water. And if, you, if all of a sudden your, your front's coming up and you're doing these wheelies, or we call it the Bronco, um, that means your weight needs to be more forward. Stop, put the kite up. Do a nice little dive, try to keep that weight more forward, and get that board to plane. The goal is not to foil, the goal is to ride the board across the water without it jumping up on you. One, it's safe. Two, you'll learn the fastest. And three, it's the best progression to get you to foiling sooner than your buddy. Which, of course, you want to learn faster than him, for sure. So, important. You know, really respect those dives. You don't need all that power. You just need it to get up onto the board. Once you're moving, that's when you go to the check turns in the sky. Now, as you get moving, 99% of the people do this. They get moving, they're foiling. I'm doing it, oh my gosh. And I get going too fast. And that kite drops lower and lower and lower and lower and lower. And then they need to stop. That kite's right down here, low, powered up. You kind of want to always keep that kite nice and high so that I have room to pull in and get off the foil or fall or whatever it may be. But Really focus on keeping that kite high. One, it keeps the pull up, helps you lifting. Two, it keeps it safer, because when the kite gets lower, that foil does things faster than you can ever imagine. So you just wanna keep that kite, park it high, deep power, cruise along, pull in for a little power when you need it, relax a little. I promise you, you'll have so much more power on a foil than you've ever expected. So, that's my first dive, first getting going on a foil. Um, try to really ride that board on top of the water. Try not to foil. If you're bouncing, calm it down. Put your weight forward, level that out. And just barely keep that leverage. If this is my foil right here, um, at an angle like this, my whole body will be at that angle of wherever that mast is. 
I don't want to break like this. That's when I'll start falling or I'll go over the front or I'll crash. Um, if I'm too far forward, obviously the nose going underwater. Other than that, it's similar to a twin tip. I would just say you're going to be more mellow with the kite because you have power. Now, as you progress, you go from riding on the water, then you just slowly, like we've talked about in previous videos, just slowly shift that weight back and that board is going to pop up. And the goal is let it pop up, put the nose back down, just slow movements. You don't have to be crazy and you don't have to pick up foiling in two minutes. Take your time. You're going to get it for sure, but just respect it and just baby little touch and goes. And by the end of the day, you're going to be up foiling and then you're going to leave us a comment and you're going to be like, Damien, oh my gosh, I love foiling. Oh my gosh. And I'll be like, man, this, this really works. <laughs> Somebody told me I've never done it. <laughs> you're all going to laugh at this, but you know, when you first start kiting, you do the walk shame and you walk up wind. When you first start foiling, you may actually do the walk of shame, but you may do it from upwind because on a foil, it's really easy to leverage and start getting it. And you're gonna just start going upwind and upwind and upwind and all of a sudden you're like, I don't know how to go downwind. And it's kind of hard to crack off and relax on the foil and it's kind of the hardest part. So to go downwind on a foil, the best thing I can say is keep that kite high you can still edge a little bit, but just when you pull in on the kite, just kind of let the foil drift a little downwind so you change your angle of your foil and just turn it a little more downwind. Ride with the kite a little bit, but keep the kite high because at any given second, I can just turn it into the wind and stop. Because what happens is when you go downwind on a foil, you just get going so fast, you can't really control it. So when you're first learning, just know, just because you're going upwind, it's a good thing. You will figure out how to go downwind, but it becomes hard. So best thing you can do is keep that kite high, crack off instead of just trying to edge up wind, just turn the board a little bit more downwind and just kind of ride it. Don't be afraid to put your weight forward, put that board down on the water and let it just ride on the water. Just keep your weight forward. You can go downwind. You'll put more drag because the board's on the water. So it'll be more, you know, easier to slow it down and not necessarily have it go too fast. Great ways to, not do the upwind walk of shame. <laughs> Just like anything, you're gonna crash, right? You're gonna get going too fast, you're gonna explode, kite's gonna go down. Best thing I can say is try to get the foil, sit on the foil or have the foil against you or have leverage, then launch your kite. A lot of people just sit in the water and drift around and then the foil gets separated from you. I personally would say when you crash your kite, swim to your foil, put it between your legs or just have one arm on it with the foot strap and just leverage. Then I can launch the kite in the water and I always have the foil near me. Foils have a tendency to really take off because they're very efficient and when there's waves or swell, the foils will just kind of drift away from you and you may lose your foil. There's plenty of people that have lost foils. So I just recommend anytime you crash, just grab your foil. I try to sit on it like a surfboard or I just put it between my legs and then I'll work on launching the kite, get the kite back up, put it on my feet, get started again. It's just a good thing to remember when I fall, grab the foil again, launch the kite. You know, we talk about safety gear. Look, I want all you guys to be safe. I want to see you all out on the water. So, you know, it doesn't hurt to wear a helmet, impact vest, foils can be tricky. It's, it's literally a unicycle on the water. It can fall to the left, right, forward, back. So wearing a helmet, impact vest, it's not going to hurt anything, at least in the beginning. So you just feel comfortable. You keep yourself safe. Highly recommend it. What makes foiling so amazing is that you can ride in such light winds on a kite. I mean, that's why you get so many more days on the water. With that, you also can ride in conditions that you would never be kiteboarding in with a twin tip because it's too light. So you may be crashing your kite in winds a lot lighter than what you're used to, which opens up a whole can of worms of launching your kite in super light winds. So make sure to like and subscribe. We got more videos coming that's gonna help you in all those scenarios, whether it's relaunching your kite, to self-rescue and to you name it. So make sure to subscribe. Thank you guys so much for tuning in today. Look, we hope this helps you. Our goal is to give our opinion to help you live the best 2021 for sure so that you can get up, enjoy the life, live every moment. Don't waste any moment on something that you don't want to do. And we're here. Please leave comments. This all helps us give more information to you guys. Check out the description. We got links in the description. We got more videos. Make sure to like and subscribe so that you don't miss one. And we got way more coming. So hopefully I can see you on the water foiling. And thank you so much and uh, have the best week.